Well, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California on this chilly spring morning. Uh, this morning, I thought it, uh, my my uh, theme of the week has been uh, IPsec VPNs. Um, you can go months without having to do anything. And then all of a sudden, you got two different people having... <laughs> Having VPN issues. Well, one isn't an issue. One uh, is just a, a new VPN that needed to be set up. So I thought, you know what? That's a good opportunity uh, to show you how we set up VPNs here on our Palo Altos. And luckily, I've got a decommissioned Palo Alto that we're going to be looking at because I'm not going to show you my real firewall. <laughs> you think I'm stupid? Uh, well, I am, but I'm still not going to show you our, our firewall. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I think I'm going to swap screens. I'm going to, because uh, I'm afraid this one would be too small for you to see. So let me move this one over here and then I'll share that screen. Where'd Zoom go? There you are. All right, so let me share a screen. Share screen two. Share. Okay, now you should be able to see the screen. And I apologize, I'm going to be looking over here because my screen two is over there. So you're going to be staring at me, staring that way. But watch the screen, don't look at me. Um, let's see, so let me make sure that I am sharing the right screen. Uh, yeah, I think I am. I'll find out when I review the video. Anyway, so this is um, this is a decommissioned firewall here that we don't really use anymore. So I thought I would go through and show you how we set up a tunnel. So um, Palo Alto firewall. Let's see, it's it's down. Or it's not really doing anything at the moment. So the first thing we do is. Um, we create a tunnel interface, and uh, it's it always starts with the, the interface name is always going to be a tunnel, um, but there's always more than one tunnel. Well, usually there's more than one tunnel, so I'm just going to start at 20. This is going to be tunnel number 20. Uh, new VPN tunnel. Give it a comment. What it's used for. Um, and we don't have a virtual router set up right now, so I'm not going to do that. Security zone. I don't have a security zone set up for it, so I'm not going to do that either. Normally, what we would do is we would have a security zone, but since this firewall has been decommissioned, there's practically nothing set up in it. So, um, but normally you would select uh, whatever virtual router you guys are using. You know, just out of curiosity, what virtual router am I using? Do I even have one? Just default. So, yeah. So we, we don't even have like a separate virtual router set up or anything right now. So normally we would on a regular firewalls. Anyway, back to setting up the tunnel interface. And so like I said, I'm make it 20 uh, first VPN. And I'm just going to use phony baloney numbers. I'm not even going to really set it up. So, um, okay. And normally I don't put an IP uh, address on it, anything like that. No management profiles. Um, so we're just going to create the tunnel interface. And there it is, tunnel 20. So then the next thing we do is then you start going through and setting up the uh, IPsec tunnel parameters. There's a there's a phase one, there's a phase two. Okay, disclaimer, I, I will freely admit before you guys, most of you guys, most of my subscribers are wonderful people, but there are a few that seem to want to put me in my place a lot and tell me how stupid I am. I, look, I know, I know I'm stupid, okay? I'm self-taught. I didn't go to school to learn any of this. I'm not certificated. I learned this on the fly. Anyway, um, I forgot where I was going with that. 
Um, oh yeah, so firewalls are my weakest uh, area of expertise. Um, just something in my brain, it just, there's a block there. Um, and especially IPsec tunnels, setting them up, getting them to work. You know, we will we will set up a call that's supposed to last an hour. We'll schedule an hour. You end up spending, I don't know, four or five hours on some of these calls trying to get a VPN tunnel up and running. It's ridiculous. Okay, anyway, enough parenthetical statements. So the next thing I do after I've created the tunnel interface, we come down over here into the network profiles and we need to create um, create an Ike crypto profile. Now you can use, there's a couple of default ones set up, but you know, what I do is I create a new profile for each tunnel I set up. That way, you know, if, if it's gonna need some tweaks to the, any of these default ones, uh, default, uh, where am I at? The uh, I crypto profiles. Um, I can just tweak that one profile that I've set up. So I will create a new um, profile for every um, every setting that's in there. So every tunnel that's in there. So let's just call it a uh, new tunnel. Like crypto. Okay, add a Diffie Hellman group. We'll go 19 and authentication. We will do, let's do SHA 384. What the heck? Encryption type. We'll do. Uh, Let's go 256. Let's make it. Let's make it really secure. Uh, you'll set up a key lifetime and all that good stuff. Uh, don't know what the rest of it will really get me, so I never set it up. So there we go. We've got a new tunnel Ike crypto profile. Um, then we set up the Ike gateway, and between the Ike crypto profile and the Ike gateway, that's what would be phase one authentication on the crypto, on the uh, tunnel. So here we go, I gotta set up a gateway and here's where we gotta make up the phony baloney numbers. Uh, so new tunnel gateway. I'm gonna say Ike V2 preferred because you can't, we can't always assume that the person we're working with on the other end, we can't assume that their tunnel will always support Ike V2 because we've got some that are only Ike V1. So we say we would prefer Ike 2, but you know, um, the interface we are going to, uh, we don't really have an interface. I didn't really set one up. Let's see, is there one I can just use? Yeah, I'll just use a loop back, loop back for now. Uh, I'm not going to give it a local IP address or anything like that because you know, we're using a loop back. Um, this guy, this would be the uh, the peer that you're going to uh, peer with, the other end of the tunnel, and we don't really have one, so I'm just going to use Google right now to give it something. Um, the pre-shared key, it's like the, the password for the tunnel. Um, usually we, uh, when we're on the call with the other person, we don't, we make one up on the fly basically and then everybody documents it however they wanna document it. Um, but usually this type of information is exchanged over the phone. We, we never email it, never, never share it in any other way other than just voice over the phone and then we like i said we make the notes and write it down so i'm going to use a super secure key called password um, local identification none I'll go over here to advanced options and here's where you can set up so we we were using ike v2 
So we want to set this guy up. Um, and we want to use our new tunnel, tunnel crypto profile. And liveness check, you can have it check for that guy every five seconds or so. It's up to you. Um, here's where you, if you're, if you got to use net traversal, I wish I could tell you what net traversal is, but like I said, my, um, firewall knowledge is not the best. I can, I can stumble my way through these setups and stuff and trial and error, get things done. Yeah, I know. Go take a class. Okay, sure. Just magically make money up here and I will do that. Um, yeah, work, work for a county. We, we don't have money. Um, so anyway, hey, I know. Put it in the comments below if you know what nat tra nat traversal will get me. Nat T, it's sometimes called. Um, so we're gonna leave all that out, and we are we got our tunnel, new tunnel gateway. So that completes setting up um, phase one, pretty much. Now on to phase two, which is basically the IPsec portion of the tunnel. So now we set up uh, an IPsec profile. And again, it's it's got a couple of default and sample ones. We're going to create a new one. New tunnel uh, IPsec crypto. And I'm just going to put phase two and again you set up the uh, the encryption parameters we're going to do aes256 cbc hey that's another thing you can put in the comments what is the difference between cbc and gcm just curious uh we're not going to do that and you can you can have it you can add several different encryption parameters um and it'll it'll negotiate whichever one the other end is is offering it'll it'll go through the, down the list of however many you put in here uh, we're not going to do that though add your authentication let's do sha384 diffie hellman group i can't remember what diffie hellman is but it's again it's part of the part of the whole encryption thing we're going to do group 19, and the key lifetime we'll we'll say is 24 hours. Um, what's wrong with this? Oh, too long. Okay, so we will say uh, let's just say. Just do that. I'll remember. I want to. I want to call it phase two. You'll. You'll see why. In fact, I'm going to go back to the Ike Gateway. And um, I'm going to call it phase one. Too long. No, that one's okay. Okay, so all the groundwork has been laid. We've got the uh, Ike crypto profile, the Ike gateway, the IPsec crypto profile. And now we go up. That's one thing I love about Palo Alto, jumping around. So now we go up and set up the actual IPsec tunnel. So we will add the tunnel. It's the new tunnel. No, the new one. Select the tunnel interface that we set up, which is tunnel 20. Ike Gateway. Well, we just did set up an Ike Gateway, didn't we? So let's choose the new Ike Gateway. That's the phase one. And the profile, crypto profile, is that. And that's why I always say, you know, there's a, I kind of put phase one and phase two in them because when I'm working with a Cisco person, on the other side, sorry, Cisco guys. <laughs> Working with someone from Cisco who's got a Cisco endpoint on their side, um, they always refer to phase one and phase two. And these are the things I just trigger in my mind. Those are the things I have to check when they're talking about phase one and phase two of the uh, negotiations. 
So, and that's really all there is to set up this tunnel, unless I am peering with a non Palo Alto device, which I almost always am. I think we've got 30 tunnels, and I think only one of them is another Palo Alto firewall. The rest are a mix of mostly Cisco, a couple, was it FortiGate? And uh, yeah. So, in peering with a Cisco, you have to tell it. Um, so in a Cisco device, you'll set up a, a access list, right? This is basically what talks to Cisco and basically sets up the access list. So um, you just need to set up these proxy IDs. And so give it a name, whatever. And then so the local address is going to be, you know, uh, let's do 0, 0 slash 16. Now we'll do 24. I don't want to give them everything. <laughs> so what internal addresses do they need to get to, basically, on in our inside network? Um, so you would set that up here. And that could be a, a specific host, or it could be a subnet. I'm just going to make it a subnet this time. Um, you know what? No, let's make it a host. Let's just say they only need to get to one host, so we would do this. Or you could put slash 24 and make it a whole subnet or whatever you're going to do. The remote is what's on his side. What's What are we trying to get to over there? Um, and then I'm going to say he's on a 10 network. Um, but I'm going to say we want this host to be able to get to that whole network. Actually, let's do this. There you go. And you can lock it down to just a specific protocol. I generally just keep any there um, because the security rules are what's going to define what, what goes in and out anyway. So do OK. Click OK, and there we've got our proxy ID. So this right here is what is going to match up to the Cisco ACL on the far end. So click OK, and there's your tunnel. Now it's going to be down <laughs> because these are all phony baloney numbers. But in theory, what should happen? Um, actually, no, we're not done yet. We are not done yet because... What we have to do is we need to go. We would normally need, we, we don't have one set up though. We would normally go in here and then add a static route in my case, because I'm all static here. We would add a static route to that guy. So I'm just going to add a phony static route. So um, VPN route one. So 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Um, no interface. Next hop. Uh, where is it? Oh, interface. No, there is an interface. I'm sorry. There is an interface involved. I don't, what's, where's my tunnel interface? So next hop, none. Okay, well, this isn't, <laughs> well, that's the problem with demos, folks. Um, normally, the tunnel.1 interface would show up here, or tunnel.20. Um, it's not showing up because uh, I don't know why. How's the channel now? Anyway, you would set up the route here, <clears throat> which I'm not going to set up because there is no route. But that's the other thing you would have to add as a static route. And to uh, wind up this circus, um, something else you may have to add is over here in the policies. You may have to add a NAT policy. So let's say that um, if you recall, I, I'm saying that uh, my internal network for, for argument's sake, mine is 192.168. Let's say that um, they also have some some 192.168 networks within within their side, so that they won't be able to route to that. 
you know, if they try to route to 192.168.0, they're going to still end up somewhere within their network. So that would be one of the reasons we set up a NAT rule here. Um, and to set that up, you basically give it a give it a name, whatever, new NAT. Tell, give it what zone it's coming from. Palo Alto loves zones, so they have security zones. So let's say it's coming from here, and it's going out to. We don't have a, a zone set up yet for that, so we'll just say this destination interface would be 20, 10 or 20. That's what should show up in the routing router, but it isn't. Uh, what service do you want? Um, what is the internal address it's coming from? So we'll just say 192.168.1.20. And to make sure that this only goes to it doesn't, this net rule doesn't trigger on all traffic, just the actual traffic I want. I'm going to say only traffic that's going out to 10.0.1.0 slash 24. So that was, that's the phony address on the other side. Okay, so you get traffic coming from, from here, going from here, going to there. What do you want it to do? You want to do source address translation, destination address translation. And I am just now learning the difference between these two. But we will do a source translation for now. You can set up a static IP. And let's say he wants it to be 1.10.0. No, Come on. Dot zero. One dot. 20 plus 32 means it's just a host. So when the traffic from that particular host, from this host, goes out to that network, by the time it gets there, it's going to appear as if it came from this address. So when he's sending traffic back to me over the tunnel, he's going to send it to this 10.0.1.20 address and when it gets back to my firewall, my firewall is going to know to send it to this address. So, um, new tunnel map. There you go. So there's the NAT rule. If you need it, you don't always need it. You know, sometimes you do. <clears throat> and then the last one is you have to set up a security rule. And uh, new tunnel rule, you know, source zone. Um, it would normally be coming from the VPN tunnel zone we have set up, but I don't have one right now. Um, I'm going to say if it's coming from, uh, do we? I don't. So I'm going to say if it's coming from. Oh no! Actually, we're we're going to set up the um, set up the rules just for the tunnel itself. So there's there's two different security policies I have to set up. There's one for the tunnel that allows the v, IPsec tunnel to come up and just exchange traffic, and then the second tunnel I would have to set up would be for the encapsulated traffic over that tunnel once it gets here. Where can it go? So there's actually like what I would do is just say tunnel VPN rule. Uh, destination zone, we'll say it's inside here to any. The uh, applications, so for this VPN tunnel, it would be things like. Um, IP sec IP. Palo Alto is application based. You don't allow protocols and ports. You allow applications. So we'll just say IP sec and Ike. 
I need to allow that. Um, we're just going to use application default, defaults. You can make exceptions to, you know, just because something comes in, it's using uh, web traffic, which would normally be port 80. But as you know, well, no, sometimes web traffic is on port 8080. So this is where you would like make any of those kind of exceptions. And the actions, allow or deny, drop it, reset it. You, you can create all kinds of deny rules. So I'm, we're going to allow that traffic. Okay, who knows how many rules I've got in here. Uh, let's just, you can filter on this to see the uh, the rules you've just, you, rules that you're just interested in. So we've got this one. Um, I'm gonna clone this. Clone down here, there we go. I'm trying to right click it. So we've that's this is this would be for the VPN. So what we're going to do is change this to. Um, so now that's their in their internal hosts. Get rid of that. You can block it down by user with Palo Alto. We're not going to do that. Coming in here and. We'll lock it down to one subnet. Two to one six eight one dot zero slash twenty four. Fat finger, Mr. Fat Fingers. And then here again, it's uh, what applications are we going to allow? And we'll just say we're going to allow web traffic. Uh, where are we? It's probably way down here at the bottom. There we go, web browsing. And uh, let's allow AOL. <laughs> AOL message board posting, we'll allow that. And uh, we'll let them get to <laughs> Facebook. All of Facebook. And those are kind of the kind of things I can block on this firewall, which is kind of nice. I don't have to know what protocols and ports Facebook uses. In fact, we do block Facebook here because it's it, uh, people spend too much time posting on Facebook, and it's a patient's rights issue too. You know, people want to Instagram everything that just can't can't allow that. And again, this URL category we can we can say they can we can lock down the the type of URLs they can get to. We're not going to do that right here. And the application is, we're just going to allow only the defaults. So if you're if you're coming over on, if you're doing web browsing, you're only going to be able to use the standard ports for web browsing, port 80, port 443, that, that sort of thing. Action, allow, deny, drop. OK. All right. We're finally done setting up a VPN tunnel. So uh, yeah, there is a lot to it. And Palo Alto is, they are so flexible that it's uh, its kind of confusing setting it all up and having to jump around to the different, I mean, just even setting up the tunnel, it's, you know, go down here to the network profiles and then come up here to the tunnel. And I'm sure it makes sense to some people and makes sense to the Palo Alto engineers. But to me, I'd, I'd like to just see it all in one, one menu selection. But... Uh, yeah, that's just me. So anyway, let me stop that share and make my face big again. There I am. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that's all I got for this week. If you guys are still awake, uh, congratulations. Um, as always, oh, and yes, thank you all for helping me hit 10,000 subscribers. Um, never in my wildest dreams did I ever imagine anybody would be interested in what I do, much less 10,000 people. So my goodness, thank you. And uh, keep those prayer requests coming. I do actually pray for you guys every night. And um, yeah, that's all I got for this week. Um, if you liked what you saw, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, thumbs up, thumbs down. And uh, we'll see you all next week. God bless. Uh, where do I stop this thing? There it is.
stop. 